What are you scared of? Just do the thing. Do the thing. Stop holding yourself back. I'm your host, Christy Chanel, and this is the Love You Miss You Bye podcast. Going live is one of the things that has really frightened me, makes me uncomfortable. It's holding me back. It's literally holding me back. I already know going live pulls people into your community. And I've seen so many creators blow up because of it. And I'm getting in my own way. This is something that I've identified. Okay. I know there's, I'm supposed to be doing this collaboration with talking with Jojo. She's so good when it comes to talking about what's happening in true crime. I love listening to her videos. I love watching her lives. I've joined her lives as far as being like a, just a watcher and commented. We've talked about collaborating together and I've kind of just been pushing it off and pushing it off because I'm like, what? I don't know what to say. Like I'm really good on tape because I can edit that. The magic is in the editing. And I know that, but live, I might sound like a complete idiot. But I need to get over that. Like, who cares if I sound like an idiot? And you just got to keep moving and, and keep growing. And it's easy for me to hide behind editing. So I've acknowledged this. I've taken it in and I've said, get your head out of your ass and do it. Just do it. What's the worst that can happen? What's the best that can happen? I challenge you to do the same thing right now. What? is terrifying you. What do you look at and think? I can never do that. It's too terrifying. I know something popped into your head because I didn't realize it was holding me back until I went to collaborate with Jojo. And I'm like, she does lives. I don't do lives. I do podcasts. And she's willing to, to come on my podcast and be interviewed and or, or just share the floor with me and, and talk some of these subjects. And I'm sure at one point she was scared to go live. I don't know. I haven't asked her. I'm probably going to ask her that. Like, what made you take the plunge? And I told myself, that is my next hurdle. I accomplished creating a podcast, which was terrifying. And I did it. And I, and I love it. And I'm so glad I took a chance on me. Even though I didn't know how to put things out in the world on the podcast streaming apps. I didn't know how to edit. I didn't know how to talk by myself. None of it's scary anymore. So... On that note, I went live today on TikTok. I just started talking. Lo and behold, I loved it. I'm very happy that I did it and I'm gonna try to do it once a week. I'm gonna try. Also on Riverside, no affiliation with me, but I have to bring it up. They have a new thing on there where you can go live on YouTube and I'm gonna try it. You know, Phoebe and I, how we had Code Green Plant, we're not doing Code Green Plant anymore. We're doing Simply Vibe and Live. And that podcast is going to be broadcast live on YouTube every week. And then I'm going to take that footage and I'm going to turn it and edit it into a podcast that will go on the streaming apps. But I decided and I told her, I was like, it terrifies me. We have to do it. So challenge accepted. And we'll see what happens. And I'll let you know if there's any growth from it or if I'm terrible or maybe one live you'll join with me and you can talk to me and we can just have a conversation. I bring all of this up because it's just important to get out of your own way. I went on a road trip with my daughter this weekend. It is something I don't do very often. I grew up in a family that, you know, we rented a two family house in Colonia, New Jersey, and we weren't the richest of folks. Uh, I did not want for anything, but I didn't have it like that, you know? And so we didn't go on vacations every year. I don't even know if we went on any. Now that I think back, I can't remember any vacation vacations. We may have gone to visit family in Texas or somewhere else, but but we never took vacations. So naturally, 
I didn't even think about taking vacation. I see people, you know, Facebook friends and stuff taking vacations, but I didn't. I was too busy being in survival mode because I'm a single parent and I'm worried about my rent because now I am replaying and reliving my childhood by renting in a beautiful neighborhood with a fantastic school and a great education, awesome football program, very safe. But I am the poor family in the neighborhood. Make no mistake about it. And that's okay. I'm okay with that. I um heard I, I heard a TikTok the other day. It says to take mini adventures six a year. And a friend of mine on TikTok, Moesha May Love, tagged me in one of these creators videos. And it was talking about what you want to accomplish in the year. Take six mini adventures. Because when you add them up, you know, before you know it, it's it's a hundred vacations that you've taken, mini, mini ones. So like the one I just took with my daughter last weekend, a one day trip to see Billy Joel in San Antonio. We got a hotel. It was a five hour road trip. Well, on the way it was seven because of traffic, poor planning. We missed Sting completely, who was the opener. Didn't see him, but he did come out for a Billy Joel song. So I did see a little bit, but I didn't get much of Sting. And, I, you know, I live paycheck to paycheck. But in August, Hannah and I were sitting there talking and I said, I really love Billy Joel and I just don't think he's going to be touring much anymore. And she said, oh, we should look. All right. So I went and I looked and he was in San Antonio. And I was like, we should get, we, we got to do this. It may not be the best seats. It may be way up there. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. We'll be together and we can listen to some really great music that touches my soul. I didn't really think much of it. I, it was a spontaneous trip and I'm so glad I took it for a multitude of reasons. One, the most obvious reason is to spend quality time with my daughter and just do something her and I. And the other part of it was to hear Billy Joel. He was a soundtrack to a lot of my teenage years. Hearing his music takes me right back to being in the car with my friends, singing along to his music. It just does. It like It's spiritual almost to hear him. I know that's a big word, right? But it's true. So I wanted my daughter to experience that with me. The thing that added the cherry on top of this trip was the fact that behind us, like directly behind us, is a row of New Jersey Italians. It was perfection, okay? Because I was looking for that hometown experience. I was looking for that memory. Because I haven't been back to Jersey in, in many, many, many years. And I just needed to feel Jersey for a little while. As weird as that sounds, it's been too long. I lean over to my daughter. I'm like, they're from, they're from New Jersey. I'm sure of it. And she goes, how do you know? I go, I just know. We just know our own. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, of course, after the show, I turn around and goes, are you guys from Jersey? And they start laughing like, yeah. And I'm like, you know, we got into that whole conversation. But I was right. I knew it. And the kicker was... It was during the World Series, so the Yankees are playing the Dodgers, and Billy Joel himself is, like, giving us score updates throughout the show. Unfortunately, they wouldn't win this one, but the people behind me were talking about it. You know, it was just, it was good. It was just so good for my soul. Of course, I got emotional and just felt it, but what it taught me is I'm longing for my roots right now. I miss it. And I stopped going to Jersey when my mom died. I really, I just did. Flying into Newark Airport just didn't feel the same. It was actually painful. I think I'm past most of the pain. Maybe not all. Maybe it'll still hurt. But I miss Jersey. I miss pizza. I miss my friends. My next trip is going to be New Jersey. Just do it. And that involves vacations, even mini ones, going live and being terrified, just being terrified for, for something that you know is going to bring you growth. Like you, I've already told you, you guys know, I do not like public speaking. Well, where else am I going to go with this? Like I haven't figured it out, but I have to get through the lives to get to the next obstacle. I'm not perfect. I won't speak perfectly. I won't look perfect. I'm very imperfect. And you like me or you don't. Really, I can't, I can't worry about that. I just have to be me and hope that you want to follow and be a part of it. 
You know, that's all I can do. And that's all you can do. That is all you can do. So whatever it is, it's holding you back. You really need to dig into that. Look a little bit deeper and think, why does that scare me? What is that triggering in me? Because there is something, there's something that's doing it. And once you figure it out, it's not that scary. It's just not. I mean, I had the same nerves when I jumped from my old job that I was there 10 years to my new job. It was scary and it did suck the first six months that I was there. It was terrible. I was regretting that move and that jump because the other one was safer. Like I didn't have to jump. I chose to jump. And now I'm here three years later at this same job and I have no regrets and it was the best thing for me. I have opportunities now in corporate that I've never had before and that I wouldn't have at the other company. Like I am responsible for the whole West Coast and Texas, but eventually I'm hoping I'm gonna be in charge of the whole damn thing. Mark it down, manifesting it, goals. I'm taking over the fucking world. Are you coming with me? Let's fucking do this. Let's fucking do this. Next Monday, I will be releasing part three of the Menendez series. I have changed the order of three and four. Originally, I was going to post about the trial and what happened and then all of the new updates that are out there. I've decided to push that to part four because there's like new stuff popping up every week, it seems. There is some new evidence that is going to blow your mind. I think they're getting out. I think they're getting out. And I want to have the most up-to-date information that I can. So I don't know if part four is going to wait till after the trial in November, or I'm going to release a part five that will have that last piece on it. I don't know. We'll, we'll kind of figure it out as we go. Part three is going to be the love lives of Eric and Lyle Menendez. So that'll be coming next Monday. And something really cool. On October 30th, I'm going to be going live with Simply Vibin. Myself and Phoebe, my co-host, I will give you the updates. It'll probably be posted on a mini short video on my YouTube page, and I'll tell you all about it then. Oh my God. My goal for December 31st, 2024 was to hit 300 subscribers on YouTube. And right now, I'm at 298 subscribers. The Lisa Marie book review, 1,300 views on that long form episode. These little mini goals along the way, hitting them and the little adrenaline pushes it gives me to speak into the abyss and hope somebody hears me and, and to see that somebody may like it and connects to it is so much bigger than, than any of this. If you guys wanna connect with me, please put a comment on the video, like and share and uh, send me a text message. It's right there in the show notes. If you want to support the show, you can also press the link there for a small donation that keeps me paying for all these things that I need for the podcast. But no matter what, I appreciate you. It's humbling. And I am so excited to see what the last two months of the year bring. See you next Monday. Love you. Miss you. Bye.